If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, October 22nd, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Chris Ramsey is our guest today in the Finise Monitor. He's the CEO of USA Water Polo, which is celebrating the women's team victory at the Olympics after three previous attempts to win gold. And Chris joins us now from Huntington Beach, California. Chris, good to see you. How are you doing today? Great, Jeff. Another beautiful day in Huntington Beach. Is there ever a bad day in Huntington Beach? They're rare. Yeah, I'm we sure. even prize the rainy days because we don't get them too often. <laughs> uh, I imagine the office there at USA Water Polo is still just buzzing about that gold medal from the women's water polo tournament. Well, it it really had everything that you love about sports in it, from my perspective. Um, it had a team that overcame adversity not just over a season, but actually over many, many years in the Olympics. The uh, the history of our women's team was a very, very tough loss in Australia in 2000, the first year that a uh, water polo beat export, uh, a bronze medal in Greece, and another very tough loss to the Netherlands in the last minute. Both, both of the games where we lost the gold medal uh, in 2000 and 2008 were lost in the last 90 seconds of play. So for us to finally be able to put a cap on it and get the gold was meaningful. Um, we had a, a bit of a hiccup against Australia where our coach called a, an illegal timeout and we got pushed into overtime in a game that we probably should have won in regulation. Um, and our women dug deep to win that game. And then the other thing that was fantastic was we had the, the breakout rise of a young star in Maggie Steffens, uh, a player who hadn't even attended college yet and uh, kind of burst on the scene scoring 21 goals over the course of the tournament five for five in the gold medal game against spain and uh it just it's it's a wonderful thing to see someone reach their potential and i think maggie was somebody that had people all over the our country waving american flags and being proud to be an american yeah it definitely was the perfect store of everything just coming together were you actually able to be there in london and watch it all happen in front of you uh, Oh yeah, I was there. I was down on deck to celebrate after, and uh, it was it was an incredible feeling to be at the venue. Uh, again, I, I do think sports reveals character, and I think that the way that the women persevered and won that was just was inspirational to everybody. And I know many of our international friends also told us how pleased they were for that team because they have been the dominant program. Uh, since water polo was introduced to the Olympics in, in 2000. But to see them finally cap it off and, and get the prize was something very special. Yeah, I'm sure there was a lot of support around the world for that. Now, kind of going post-Olympics, USA Swimming always talks about a post-Olympic bump that they see every four years in their membership. Is that the same for water polo? Yeah, we're getting a lot of anecdotal information about people calling up and saying, where can they play? This kind of coincides with a, a broader effort they've been making to try to get uh, polo in every pool. And we think that polo is a great complement to swimming, obviously. For competitive swimming, it's, a, it's an alternative. Uh, a lot of people in the, on the swimming side of it find that somewhere around the age of 12 or 13, they're kind of capping out at uh, their times and figuring out where they fit in the hierarchy. Of course, the great thing about a team sport like water polo is it's not necessarily if you're a tenth of a second faster that makes, that makes the difference in your uh, performance. There's a lot of other factors that go into a team sport uh, that's dynamic like water polo. So we would like to have polo in every, in every pool, just like you see soccer on every football or track and field stadium around America. And we put some people on in different states. We've got a full-time person in one in Indiana now, uh, trying to kind of make it possible for parks and recs departments, YMCA's, boys and girls clubs, other places that have pools to offer it. 
And we've seen some, some nice take up on that. So uh, I, I've talked to a lot of water polo players over the years, and they've said the same thing that they're looking for, as you said, uh, polo in every pool. What do you see as the, the biggest challenge to making that happen? Well, I think that there, one of the challenges traditionally has been uh, the popularity of swimming and the fact that you can get more bodies into swim lanes typically than you can on a water polo course. So it's sort of a more financially uh, sound investment. However, with just eight or ten years, there are actually a lot of facilities that are looking to fill up additional time and space. And so water polo uh, has a good economic model behind it as well as being something that I think is a lot of fun for people to play. We had a really a groundbreaking thing happen uh, about six months ago. Uh, the a group of swim, co of swim coaches in the state of Tennessee contacted us, high school swim coaches, and said, you know, we have additional time in our, in, our co in our high school year where the pool really isn't being used. Could you help us figure out how to launch water polo? So this spring, 2013, in the state of Tennessee, water polo is becoming an official state high school sport. Uh, they've been in partnership with USA Water Polo that, with that. And we're helping the swim coaches get up to speed on how to, to run water polo tournaments and coach water polo. And it's really a collaborative effort. And we're going to have water polo at the high schools in Tennessee. I think Georgia's close to following um, in their footsteps. And we're hoping that we're going to be able to launch that in more states around the nation. Yeah, it must be a really big feat to have had that happen. I mean, Tennessee, you don't think of water polo, but I would imagine in maybe four or five years that, you know, we might see the next Maggie Steffens come out of there. Well, I, I do think the bigger message here is for those, those that were in the Olympic sports business, uh, and that includes swimming and synchronized swimming and diving, uh, we're still a relatively small sliver of sport activity around America. And I think that we can be bigger, but I think one of the ways that we can be bigger is by collaborating and working together. And, you know, I know my good friend Chuck Wilgus at USA Swimming agrees with that principle. It's just figuring out how we can do it collaboratively so that, you know, we're, we actually are working together to enlarge aquatic sports across the U.S. Yeah, it definitely is something that, that you have to work it hand in hand, especially since, as I said, I've talked to a lot of water polo players, and they said that they were swimmers and they became water polo players. Or I've actually talked to a few swimmers who said that they started young as a water polo player and moved to swimming. So there definitely has to be a lot of synergy between these sports. Well, I think traditionally where water polo is fine in, in recruiting more people in our sport is that typically you learn to swim by swimming people and then you often at the same facility where you learn to swim might get recruited for a junior or, or you know you a uh, very young age swim team and you're sort of launched in that so we have come up with an alternative um, to that called splash ball where we want more kids at the beginning level to sample water polo at a very elementary level passing catching having fun just getting in the water with the ball and we're hopeful that more kids trying it out I mean more kids will want to continue the sport as they continue along in their own uh, athletic pursuit. So in the past, we really didn't have an option for kids that were very young. We waited until they finished their swimming careers or decided they wanted to pick up swimming in addition to it. I know, you know, my youngest son plays water polo at the college level, but he certainly started in swimming. And you have to swim to play water polo. Let's face it, you want to be a good, strong, fast swimmer. Uh, I think that what the other change, though, is there used to be a perception that water polo might harm your swimming stroke. And there's been a lot of research and a lot of work on that over the years, and it's really not true. Uh, the reality is that swimming and water polo help one another. They make you a stronger swimmer. They give you a nice cross-training alternative. And uh, the two sports should be working in partnership. You have a water polo background yourself as a player. Tell us about that. Well, I played water polo in high school. Um, I was a goalie in high school. I played at Temple City High in California. Uh, went to University of Redlands, um, lettered and started playing water polo my, my freshman year there. 
And I actually went to England for a year and um, picked up a half blue playing basketball in Cambridge as a switch because the pool there was so dreadful in England. It was They called it the dungeon. And I just couldn't bear after being a Californian and being outside to have to go inside this, this terribly ventilated facility. But then I came back and I actually ended up playing two meters at Redlands uh, my last years there. And still actually jump in and play Masters sometimes at Corona Del Mar. Uh, sometimes my kids drag me down there. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I still love the sport. But it's not for the faint of heart. you got to be in shape. I will say that. Yes, I, I played a semester in high school, and I, I agree. It's definitely, we say stuff like the 1,500 free and the 400 I am a hard. Uh, one, uh, one quarter of water polo definitely outdoes that. I think what is great about it, though, and what I appreciate, and I think our Masters players do, is it's great to have an aquatic sport that's a team alternative. And, you know, swim team's great, but still, it's essentially individual elements that come together for a team result. And I do think the dynamic of water polo and the kind of friendships you make um, playing a, a 3D sport like water polo uh, does create a lot of great opportunities for friendships and you know it's just something some people like that dynamic and it's nice for us in the aquatic world to have that option. Before you were CEO of USA Water Polo you were heavily involved in ballet now are there any kind of similarities that you would see yeah. between ballet and water polo? Uh, there's so many similarities you'd be stunned. Um, Great ballerinas uh, and dancers are fabulous athletes. They're unbelievably dis disciplined in what they do. So they're athletes in both sports as well as artists. Uh, I think, you know, one of the best things you can say about an athlete, I always think about Lynn Swan and the Pittsburgh Steelers, and people used to say as a wide receiver that he was balletic in the way he made catches. So they're athletes in both sports. There's a tremendous emphasis on international uh, uh, elements like international travel, international relations, um, international competition. Um, there's touring and ballet uh, all over the world, so that's similar. Uh, their ticket, their spectator sports, they're 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 fundamentally entertaining to people who watch them. So there are a lot more similarities, frankly, than there are differences. Of course, in ballet, we don't keep score, <laughs> and nobody ends up with a bloody nose usually at the end of it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Chris, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts on, on um, expanding water polo through the United States. I'm sure it's going to continue to expand with you there. Um, best of luck to you not only this coming season, but uh, through the next Olympic Quadrinium. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk, and uh, we'll try to see how to get some more gold medals next time. I'm sure you will. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Okay, take care. All right, so that's Chris Ramsey joining us in the Finise Monitor today, and that's going to do it for today's show. We invite you to join us on SwimmingWorld.com, on Facebook, or on Twitter to keep up with all the latest news in aquatic sports. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.